So again, I have to talk about, I must talk about the definition of leaky gut, even though the medical industry does not recognize it as an actual diagnosable condition, though the holistic world loves to use the word leaky gut because they have all their probiotics and different diets to go and combat leaky gut. But what it really comes from, there is an actual point of view of leaky gut, and it is conflicting viral programming because leaky gut actually stems into starvation, okay? And that's why you have cancer patients dealing with being overly obese as well as very underweight because of the amount of viral programming that is conflicting, that is causing then the body to attack itself. Because if you have five different viral programming and uh, 2.5 is attacking you and 2.5 is trying to keep you alive, it's going to then punch holes in your gut and you are not regenerating cells faster than your body's attacking itself. And so then, yes, you experience the aging process, which is starvation. And that's what you see in grandma and grandpa. That's what you see in yourself. When you see the graying hair, you see the loss of eyesight, the loss of hair, um, the loss of actually being underweight too. When you're losing collagen, you're losing fat, you're losing a lot of your faculties and you're watching your body basically far, fall apart before your very eyes. So in a, in, a, in a more of a medical sense, leaky gut is from conflicting viral programming, but then also too, conflicted viral programming also then translates into not only cancer, but also disease, chronic illness, autoimmune disorders, and you know all the different psychological issues like depression or anxiety or you know looping in... Um, you know, catastrophic events like PTSD. So, you know, low sodium diets really keep people in a very cured state of decline. And how is that? Well, because, you know, you don't have enough energy or food to promote the predominant programming for your body to protect itself and also regenerate at the micro level. And so, you know, it... it now that I've figured everything out and I've narrowed everything down to starvation, and starvation it can be translated into antibiotics, removing organs. Starvation is depriving yourself of food, of meat and milk and eggs and cheese and carbs and sugars because you want to achieve a type of aesthetic appeal. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of crazy the amount of layers of programming that you must keep peeling back to finally get to the root cause. And it is starvation because when you look at third world countries, you know, they're fighting for food. And here we're given all the food in the world, but we can't even process it. We actually avoid it. Um, you only see two sides or two outcomes when somebody is dying. They're either so obese and they can't move or they're so underweight, they're so skinny that they can't even, you know, they can't even keep weight on. I mean, just go look around you. Look at your friends and family. Look at your mom and your dad and your aunts and your uncles. You look at people who are in oncology units, palliative care units, hospice, and you see they're so atrophy that they can't even release, or, you know, or they're so atrophy they can't even, um, or they're burning so much energy that they can't even keep weight on. And the body, and so here's the thing, when you're in a cured state of decline, no matter what, if you're doing so much of the jelly juice in reaction to all of evolution, you'll be in a cured state of decline. You'll turn into a mummy or beef jerky. And if you don't have enough salt in your diet, you'll be in a cured state of decline. And relative to your hormonal imbalances, you'll either take on and over accumulate in fat, or you will not have enough fat of insulation, and then the environment will actually cannibalize you. And so look at couples out there. You can see couples, what they attract, okay? Just all the evidence is right before your very eyes. And, you know, I haven't mentioned it like this because, yes, it actually hits close to home. People in my world, people in my family, you know, friends and whatever, all 
have this issue of obesity or underweight. They're starving themselves and they also are experiencing cancer disease, chronic illness, autoimmune disorders. Yes, they're on a string of drugs. They've had heart attacks and strokes. They've had organs taken out. They're utilizing the medical system to suction out their mucus because they've atrophied their first lines of defense and their second lines of defense. And so they teach their kids to depend on the medical holistic industry, not to expel on their own. And so, yes, they, and so that's why the ventilators are the outcome when there is a viral exposure because the amount of antibodies that are um, accumulating very quickly from a viral exposure, the person is not releasing more than they are producing. And that's why you have so much mucus and infection. That's why you have heart attacks because the lack of electrolytes and the lack of sodium chloride in the diet is what causes then the atrophy in the blood vessels. And then you have weak blood vessels too because there's so much blood and thickness that it actually taxes the vessels, making them thin. So they'll even burst. They'll even burst and then, or they, you know, and then, or they become, you know, where you have to get a stent or something, where you have to get bypass surgery, okay? And there's a lot of fat, you know, a lot of plaque and everything, just, you know, just building up, building up, and also in your lymph nodes. And that's where cancer comes from because all the viral programming, then you have the tumors, and the viral programming is when the body is not able to release the anomalous viral programming and so that's where cancer comes in that's where lymphoma that's where myeloma all these different diseases are from atrophy or from so much energy the body isn't able to keep the evolution in the body it can't even keep the fatty acid and so they're always going to the medical system to get nipped and tucked and suctioned and things dug out of you and things put in you i mean when you're getting transplants that's taking somebody else's programming and trying to apply it to you and see if there's some alignment. And then, you know, when there's a virus in the environment, a new one, the person can't be around anybody because they're so immunocompromised that any new virus is going to go and try to kick out the invader, which is the transplant. And so it's like, you know, people don't realize to what extent they are damaging. But, you know, but it doesn't even matter. I'm not trying to get them to change their whatever. I want everyone to have all the information and I want them to see the evidence right in their household. I want them to look at their grandma and their grandpa and their mom and their dad and their sister and their brother and their husband and wife and be like, holy shit. What was not seen before is now going to be seen because how else am I going to write an authentic book that really can paint a very accurate picture that you can relate to? See why I didn't get, you know, why I felt like I had really, I was very far removed from my book a couple of years ago because I couldn't write relating to what people are experiencing because they couldn't see it. If they weren't experiencing this information, then they had no relationship to it. Oh, but when you see that your grandma and grandpa, you know, you look at pictures of grandma and grandpa and you see them on their deathbed and there's like nothing to them. It's because they've been medically starved to death. They've been nipped and tucked for so many years and it started from day one, as soon as they were born in the hospital. But yeah, that's fine. You get all your things when you're born, but then when new viruses come in the environment and you start utilizing OTC drugs and you start utilizing you know, your hospital and your doctors and your friends who have all these different supplements and things like that, the child and the adult don't learn how to expel on their own. So like I said in my pinned post, there are three lines of defense, the coughing, the mucus, and the sneezing. And if you're getting things suctioned out and you're getting things, you know, um, in, injected in you so you don't feel the respiratory and actually exercise your diaphragm, then it goes to your second lines of defense. Oh, but there's Imodium AD. There's things to stop you from pooping. There's Pepto-Bismo to, to, to help with your diarrhea. Um, they have found every way in the medical holistic industry to stop you up. And so when you are ballooning up or when you have so many conflicting programming, then they go and be like, okay, we're going to go and do a flush. We're going to go and do a suction. We're going to go in and do some surgery on you and, and redirect your hormones or redirect this and redirect that. And then you've just been a pincushion and you've been, um, you know, somebody's uh, science project. And out of your pocket and out of your community's pocket, You've given your body to science as soon as you enter into the medical holistic industry. And then the outcome is look at grandma, look at grandpa, 
Look at your brothers and your sisters and your aunts and your uncles, and they're all suffering from hormonal dysfunctions to, you know, depression, to anxiety, to aggression, to alcohol, to drugs, to, oh, hell, I don't know. They're all like, you know, empaths and are all, you know, emotional over everything. And, and holy crap, then you have, yes, a diverse society. <laughs> So, you know, I am getting much better organized and I've had to start this book over again. But, you know, the one thing that really was brought to my attention was about context and context gives permission to violate the rules and the laws of life. And context is applied to politics, religion and science. They don't discriminate. And so it allows then the medical holistic and the politics and the religion to violate the laws of life and justify it by bringing in death because you don't want to feel pain or discomfort. That's what it comes down to is the fact that it's okay to violate the laws of life because you don't want to feel pain. It's okay to apply an antibiotic and call it life. Antibiotic is a completely called antibiotic. And then there are words that then snow you or put up a smoke screen like diet. I'm going to go on a diet. That's medical starvation and there's political starvation, you know, starving yourself because something politically or, you know, you, uh, you know, you don't believe in eating meat because you're, you know, you don't, the animals. Okay. And then there's uh, religious starvation. You, you can, I'm not going to eat pig. I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to eat that, but I'll eat all this stuff. And, you know, you deprive yourself of nutrients that way. So there's a lot of, and also for aesthetics and for, you know, beauty stuff and stuff. So there's a lot of uh, context to starve people. Oh, there's a lot of context to starve people. Nutritionists from, you know, cancer patients are starving them. Oh, you stay away from this, stay away from that. I see people who just got over cancer now want to get a, a degree and a credential in nutritionist because they just got over cancer. So they deem themselves the expert in medical starvation. And I'm just like, Ugh. You know, so, you know, and so there's context in politics. War is peace. Um, it's OK to, to, to you know, to, to start a war so you can get peace when really you should just walk away from any war and protect yourself. Um, there's religious context where one one law violates the other. And, you know, and, and it's OK for uh, to be a pro-life and all babies should live. But it's OK for grandma to starve over there and, you know, in in hospice or in these nursing homes where these, you know, the, the medical staff really, you know, you're just a number on there and they're just waiting for you to just go and that bed will be filled by somebody else. And so, you know, I, I can't just ignore this. I know I'm putting myself even more of an island because of, yes, I'm now reaching so close to home that it's, it's like, it's very offensive. I and I understand. I know it. And 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 I and I'm just gonna have to say it. I'm gonna be the one to say it, because once you actually align your body, mind, and spirit, and you reverse all of your conditions and your issues, and you let go of the you know the fear of what people think of you, then you start seeing the hypocrisy in the politics, in the Republicans, in the Democrats in all of the different arguments, anti-vax and the pro-vax. And you can't help now but put it out there because you're like, oh my God, I fall, I fell into this, into these manipulations for so many years. And so have you. And so, you know, so in a lot of ways, it, you know, it's kind of fun gloating a little bit. I, I do enjoy this because I can articulate. That's the, the joy of this is that I can articulate what my gut says when someone says something on my Facebook and I have this gut reaction at first, like, I'm just like, how do I articulate this? I know something is wrong, but I can't articulate it. And then after like, you know, a few comments afterwards, then I get to the root cause of which there's mixed context, mixed situations that are being then uh, combined as if it was a true statement. And there's a lot of arguments that are valid and invalid. And then they get mushed together and it becomes a context that actually violates many laws and there is misalignment in the actual there's misalignment in the concept that they're trying to put out there and so this is what my goal is to separate separate out all the different arguments and concepts and expose the context 
And this is the thing. My mom was very good at context. That's why her and I had a major issue. Why we've always had major issues is because she was a professional context creator. Psychology does that. Law does that as well as the medical system. And when you are a psychologist and you're always going to the medical system and you have a degree in law, and then my dad's in biotechnology, context is everywhere. Hypocrisy is everywhere. I have experience in all of it, personal experience. And then I see it out there in the, in, you know, all over freaking Facebook. And so if anyone's going to bring up and expose context, it should be someone that's lived it her whole freaking life and rebelled against it. You wonder why you guys rebel? Because you know there's hypocrisy. You wonder why you're pissed in relationships or pissed in your community and pissed at politics because you know there's hypocrisy, but you're also partaking in it too. You haven't even examined your own hypocrisy, but it's everyone else is hypocritical except for you. And so I even had to examine my own belief systems and arguments before I put something out there and I'd have to backpedal a few times. because like, oh shit, I thought this was this, but no, it's not. And when you can actually backpedal and look at what hypocrisy you put out there and explain, well, I did think this and now I understand, I've evolved, then you've evolved. But if you say, oh yeah, I'm just balanced, I'm this and I'm that, and you have never explained both sides of an issue, you're not balanced. And that's the, the, the beauty of the JJs is at some point you'll be able to articulate both sides of an argument and understand both sides, but then still have another option for not only yourself, but for other people. But you won't find that in the activism because there's too much money in hypocrisy. That's why our system is very, very strategic in, in how it, in, in, in how it manifests in, you know, in all the ec economics. There's a lot of money in context and hypocrisy, but you could recognize it and, you know, do I violate any laws out there that I know of? Not, I, not that I can think of. If you guys see me violate any of my own laws, okay, if you think that I am applying a context to justify my position, Please feel free. Tell me what you think I'm violating. I don't mind hearing somebody say, okay, Jillian. And you and then you're like you're afraid of that. I'm gonna be like block you or something. But if you actually have a legitimate, intelligent argument as far as the context of what I'm speaking, because remember there's only two laws, life and death. We either violate the laws of life or you violate the laws of death. And there's consequences. Life and death. So I don't want to get caught up in all the freaking politics and all the different words in the politics. But if you understand the laws of life and death, laws of life, probiotics, food and energy, the laws of death, starvation and antibiotics. And everything else is irrelevant. It comes down to black and white laws of life and death. And that's what every politics, religion and science is based upon is their context of laws, their context of life and death. And so if you don't know the laws, you'll believe all the stories. So I, I don't think anyone's going to really find anything that I'm being hypocritical about. So, but I challenge you, but you know, it's a double-edged sword. Be careful, you know, because <laughs> you'll piss me off. So maybe I don't challenge you. But I mean, if there is something actually intelligent that you see that it does conflict, which, okay, but then we, you know, we know that, that that it's all about balance and population control and keeping things. But hey, and that's the thing. It's not everyone's going to get this. Intelligence is diminishing in the population. So naturally, there's going to be people who are going to take themselves out because of their lack of understanding. So there's even though I'm applying life, there are those that will take themselves out purposely and intentionally and like it just to spite me too. <laughs> So don't worry, the balance of, of life and death are going to be out there as far as the Trinity. Because there is life, life and death, indefinite life and indefinite death. You have a choice. All right. Bye.